Hi. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Welcome James. to the uh, Village of North Hudson Plan Commission meeting for Wednesday, February 17th, 2021. Uh, we'll have a roll call, please, Jessica. Okay. Members Anderson? Present. Bachman? Absent. Howard? Absent. Uh, Chair Miser? Here. Members Mitchell? Here. Schneider? Here. Wecken? Present. Okay, we have a quorum, thank you. First order of business is approval of the meeting minutes from last month of January 20th. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? I second. second. Okay, are there any corrections or additions to the meeting minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of the meeting minutes of January 20th, signify by saying aye. 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 Sounds good, that has passed, thank you. Now we have a public hearing scheduled. We'll start with a summary first before we do that. Uh, something we talked about a couple months ago, conditional use permit of Heidi Mahler to construct an elevator lift at 222 Summers Landing. Uh, we talked about this before and we had a few questions about it. And so we've had some time for people to respond to it. Um, Mr. Johnson, would you like to speak and just say what's different or not, or what, are you gonna be the one speaking? Uh, I believe Bill with uh, Hill Hiker will be the primary uh, okay. contact on that. Okay, well, I think some, I, somebody I'm wants presuming to just... I was just part of it for the reason of, hang on, I'm sorry, my pager went off. Um, just in regards to my part of it with the landing and the landing finishes. Yes. So I can turn it over to, to Bill until we have, you have questions for me. Okay. Well, we had a list of uh, some questions that we wanted answered last time. And uh, yep. if somebody would like to address those. Sure. Sure. Uh, this is Bill McLaughlin with Hill Hiker. And I think you can uh, uh, lay these questions on me. Let's see if I can get through them. Okay, somewhere in my package of stuff we have, here are the questions. Uh, where is okay. that document? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second, somebody has it. Right, it was in our package, uh, Jessica, that it said the questions yes. at the- on the back side of the issue statement. Back side, okay. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Items requested from the applicant on the December 16th, 2020 meeting. Uh, provide a description for the color of the track system. And the answer is the lift will be clear poly polycarbonate material, which meets village code, nor be visual inconspicuous. And B, all visible parts of the lift shall be painted or finished in earth tone and shall be visibly inconspicuous. Is that all? Will that be so? Yes, we can, uh, we'll powder coat it, uh, a, you know, earth tone uh, colors. And uh, that would be through Bureau of Land Management colors. And um, so, and we can certainly supply that color choice once the homeowner, uh, you know, decides which way they want to go. Typically it's a green or a brown or a tan, something yeah. that will look good. Okay. Say, say Mike, it's, this is Paul Mahler. I guess yep. the question for the plan commission and the board is whether the clear Polycarbonate does meet village code. Village code. It does. Um, you know that I think the code says that all parts, all visible parts of the lift, have to be in earth tone, non-reflective, and visually inconspicuous. Now, visually inconspicuous is defined as whether or not you can see it from the midpoint of the river. Earth tone means it's a color that 
is uh, harmonious with the vegetation during leaf on conditions in the summer. Now that's a, a question for this commission, whether clear polycarbonate is non-reflective and visually inconspicuous. Um, your code does not mention clear polycarbonate as an approved condition, nor does the DNR code. Um, mm -hmm. Those are the standards that, you know, earth, earth tones and visually inconspicuous and non-reflective. And, and for Bill then the, uh... The non the non subjective one was would be if it's non reflective. Can you answer that? Well, that's a good question. Clear Lexan polycarbonate would be as reflective as possibly clear glass. So, could you conceivably consider it to be reflective? Possibly. I mean, if you guys really don't want to see polycarbonate, we've used polycarbonate on the Saint Croix River on both sides for twenty some years. But if you guys don't want to see it, it's not a big deal. We'll manufacture it out of a different material. Um, more of a, a, you know, the way that the National Elevator Safety Code, which I have to follow on this job, says I have to reject a ball of three quarters inch or, or smaller. So really it ends up to be look up, looking more like a box, like the old school lifts. If you're standing up at the top of the hill and you're looking through my lift, you can't, you can see the other side of the river. I could see the boat in the middle of the river. So all you're seeing is framework that's got earth tone colors and that Lexan polycarbonate. I mean, it may be shiny initially, but it gets a little dusty and dirty and you, you can see through it, but it's not creating some, some mirror image or anything like that. Uh, there's no doubt about that. This stuff is pretty tough. We use it for a safety material so people don't put their fingers through it. And like I said, we just did one in the Kinney Connect. Um, now, granted, it's you know down south of here, but it's still on the same side of the river, and we're we're you know it's very it's the leaves are there you can't see it. Bill, the, this is Mary. The um, the Kinney Connect is not on a national scenic riverway, and our ordinance does say with a comma. Earth tone, non-reflective materials. It's not one or the other. It's earth tone and non-reflective. Okay, we'll, we'll 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 leave it at that. We'll go ahead and do a a um, uh, an expanded metal. It'll the whole car will be painted earth tone color. And whether we do it in that or like Epe wood, uh, like a Brazilian hardwood or a, or a you know something a cypress or something like that, we can do it that way too. I mean, I've done them all different ways. I've manufactured over 700 of these. So if that's what you guys want to see, that's what we'll do. And that Kinney Connect job is on the St. Croix River. Um, well, anyway, I will tell you that I, well, uh, a little bit. the way the code <laughs> is, it's commas. It's not one or the other. Yeah, and, and I think if I remember from last meeting, there was, you know, some questions and Mike can certainly fill those in, but you know, whether or not the polycarbonate was going to comply. And, and I don't know if you've seen the DNR comments, but the DNR, the DNR's position is that it doesn't. Uh, I think that was clear in the memo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was some other information needed on, you know, what trees were cut, whether there's a yeah, we'll vegetative get, yeah, got plan to put in. And we, we need to yeah, go through I'll, those. We'll, we'll but one of the big the ones of was the tone. The items that we, we requested. So number two, provide information showing the lift and its transporting device or power source shall be visibly inconspicuous and located in the most visually inconspicuous portion of the lot. And I don't like from what I read and looking at the pictures that looked like it met that. Is is there any comments on that point? I think that's kind of vague. Uh, yeah, I think what we were trying to do is to, instead of just running a straight train down to the river, is to kind of sideswipe that hill a little bit and to yeah. keep it as low as possible, because we're actually going to have to have an automatic leveling system to keep it lower so we're not way up in the, in the air. So we're trying to keep it pretty low. We don't want it in the dirt, but we want to, you know, from a mechanical standpoint, but we want to, we want to keep it, you know, Maybe a foot to two feet off the ground is the idea there. Keep it fairly low. 
Okay. Uh, now, number three is the vegetation plan. Provide the vegetation plan. A native vegetation planning shall be used to form a vegetative canopy to screen the lift. And B, existing vegetation may be removed within a foot of either side of the lift route. That's where last time it came up that it looked like there was a large section cut. We've since received some pictures and a vegetation plan. And, uh, and does anyone have a comment on the vegetation plan? Uh, Kevin, uh, from an engineering point of view, it, it looks like what's been cleared or what they say is gonna be cleared is the right width. <clears throat> Yeah, just looking, you know, at the picture, it doesn't look, you know, super wide by any means. Yeah. I mean, we can't gauge it by what actually the measurement is, but it's not like it's been, you know, clear cut or extended to any degree that I can tell. Yeah. And, okay. and Mike, just maybe for the people that are viewing this, you know, the, the cutting cannot occur until after the permit is issued. Right. That was not the case here. Right. So I just but want to it, it point has that now, out. Now, where do we yeah. go now? I know, I'm just saying for, for information for other people that may be watching, you don't yes. cut first and then come in to get your permit. Right. And then from what we read from the tree service, was, they said mostly they cut buckthorn and, and, and then there was, they, they handed us, we've got this planting thing where they're proposing putting in some trees to help screen it. Is that correct, Bill or whoever? Yes, um, we are the elevator manufacturers and installers. Um, we help to facilitate that to make sure that, that uh, we can, you know, obviously once everything is out of there, the tree guys will come in and they will uh, sort of reforest, if you want to call it that, to create this canopy. And I think the way they cut it through the hill, I think by the time June rolls around and you're out on the boat, this thing is going to be inconspicuous from the river. We're going to just yep. settle it right down so nobody's going to see it or hear it. And that's what you mentioned last time that natural growth will also occur. Correct, right away. You'll have to weed whip underneath the track because it does allow that sunlight to go through it. And the DNR likes that because it's they're not like stairs that nothing grows there. <laughs> And then last time the DNR had a question about the landing details that we were given a size, but the drawing made it look bigger than that. So if you could explain the landing. Um, that would probably be uh, the other gentleman. Okay. That's Brent Johnson. Yep, I'm here. It changed. Okay. So I, I, went, I drew it within the parameters of hill hikers dimensions that are required uh, landing? The, question? the landing the wood uh, wood platforms or the landing of the tram right so those drawings were submitted um, I, I guess yeah, but... what questions might you have on that aspect well it's only supposed to be big enough to exit the tram. Okay. So, well, so go where ahead. those steps are, adding another three feet even, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's correct. And well, on the down. Go ahead, landscape I'm plan said it was a four by four landing and this is a six by 10. Six yeah, I took 10. that off hill hikers prescribed design for access and the ability for the clients to uh, safely move about, you know, presuming there's going to be more than one person in the tram uh, that allows that person, one person to exit, stand safely without tumbling down the stairs. So that's a question. How many people does the tram hold? Four people, 850 pound capacity. So we're, again, we're regulated by the Department of Labor and Industry Elevator Safety, and we have to have a platform that's safe. We don't, we're not building a, you know, a gazebo or, a, or, a, or a, a tanning platform or anything like that. What we're looking for is a, 
a minimal platform to safely get on and off the lift and then to, you know, a few steps to get down towards uh, the river and or if we're going to have, uh, you know, a platform at the top of the hill, we need a small platform. So, so why isn't um, the steps in front of the six feet, four inch part instead of three feet over? Boy, you're catching me without looking at the drawing. I, I really don't know what to tell you on that. And that's done. That's the last thing we do. I guess what what are the what does the um, Scenic Water Protection Act say in regards with platforms? Minimal. Okay. Just so to that, safely that's get off. So my my point is, um, the drawing is the the platform at the bottom. Okay. Is drawn. Yeah at six feet, eight inches wide at the tram door, and then six feet, four inches wide or long, six feet, four inches long, and then, you know, okay. four okay. foot steps. So well, you're steps looking could at be right off that six foot four thing and you get rid of that three feet, eight inches. Okay, okay. well, the, the width of the stairway is three feet, eight inches. Yeah. So we could make the platform six by six and then direct the stairs immediately down to the river. What with the way yes. the design shows on the lower deck, it was more so that you could exit the tram, the four occupants, stay in there, organize your thoughts per se, go to the landing and then turn and walk down onto the beach directly towards the river. Uh, what that provides is more than more often than not a level area for the stair treads to land on as to po as opposed to uh, following the slope of the sand if we exited and went straight we'll say down river now I have to you know now I'm either digging into the sand for the hillside of the stair tread which, you know, now I'm within, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll say three inches of grade. And the other end of my stair is at the, you know, required seven and three quarter, we'll say. So I looked at it as more as a safety factor of turning it that way towards the riverside that my end of my stair land, my end of my stair treads would land on quote unquote relatively level common area on each end of the tread. Um, right, because while this drawing looks like you have two steps that would be on the beach landing part. Right, but you've got current one, code, two, three, current four code, treads. Current code, right, but current code says I can't have a variance greater than three eighths of an inch on any part of the riser of a stair tread. So by turning it towards the river, I'm getting as close as I can. You know, granted, there's going to be variables with rain, sand, blah, blah, blah. But I'm trying to get it so that when you step off either end of that stairway, there's not a differential in the step height that would cause a potential trip hazard. That's why the code is written for the mandate of three eighths inch tolerance through the run of a stairway. So are you talking about the variance on the width of the stair? I mean, from, you know, the, how wide the. Not the width, the as you go height. down a step, if you have the height of each. The riser. Tread to tread. I, I yes. understand the riser part. Um, I just don't understand why those steps can't be moved to. Take oh, you want to move them over off. to the six foot four, the six foot four? Yep. On that dimension? Yep. Uh, we certainly could. You know, now you're looking at the potential of one, two, three, four, five, six, potentially seven risers. Uh, you, you know, we can't really set the final elevation of the stair from platform to beach until the elevation is established of how high the platform is off the sand. So this was really just for reference. I do agree we could come off that six foot four part of the landing, but how far out into the beach is this gonna stick? I, I looked at it from being less uh, intrusive 
under the natu- into the natural landscape, even though, yes, it is wider by, you know, it's 10 feet wide, but presumably that's tucked into the hill. You know, try to keep it as close so it's not a big obstruction on a beautiful sand beach, I guess is the way I looked at it. We have okay, the, the- so, so is the back end of that six foot eight landing, you've got uh, the riverside part of it, and you go back six feet, eight inches. Does that put you into the hillside? That'll be established by Bill and I once we design the track length and the actual tram stop. So that that's a variable that needs to be addressed at construction time. So there is some variability on exactly where it's going to be placed. But ideally for the clients, we would like to make it as less intrusive on the scenic area as possible. You know, this is Mike. I'm, I'm looking at the very last uh, line on that, on the DNR's letter of December 8th, where, where they talk about the landing. And the landing should not be larger than required to accompany the lift entry exit. And I'm looking at that as you definitely need to take into account the visual effects and the safety. So it's like Correct. one of you said earlier, you're not building a gazebo. So it's an extra foot here or there might make something a little better on something else is, is how I looked at it. Does that make sense, Mary? Yeah, I'm just, um... You've got to look at the swing of the door from the lift and then add how wide is that door? Typically, that door is going to be 32 inches wide. So there's two doors we're talking about here. We're talking about a sliding door on my elevator. And then there's a threshold of three inches between face of my sliding door and face of fixed landing that's required on that on that uh, platform. Uh, which will be determined, you know, final elevation. We're going to try to get as low as we possibly can without getting into the, you know, 100 year flood plane and the, you know, the, uh, the Army Corps of Engineer line. So, um, so that's, the, there'll be a, a swinging door and there'll be a, a safety contact on that. So you got to have that door closed, all the doors closed for safety um, required by the, you know, the state elevator inspector. Okay. So the elevator door is a sliding one, not a swinging one? Correct. Yes, correct. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on the landing? Otherwise, I'll go to the next statement on the DNRs or on the items requested. Uh, number five, pro- provide details of the path where the lift will be constructed. Uh, I think this drawing we have that has the, uh, uh, the surveyor seal on it and the uh, the plantings, I think that shows the path. That's pretty accurate. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, number six, provide documents and communications from the parties who authorize remove the trees. So I was a little confused reading that too. Uh, and maybe Ms. Mahler would, would, would comment on that is uh, uh, mostly it was brush. And, and some of the things you said, it, it was right after you acquired the land. So was some of it not cut or some cut before you got there? Is that what that means? Um, yes, we only cut the pathway or save a tree cut the pathway, um, Scott. And, um, and then we looked at the trees that he had sent to you that he had cut um, down and we or Harrison had established the other trees in that runway to replace those. But most of that was um, up top. And I sent a picture of that um, was brush and other buckthorn that was cut prior to our even acquiring the property. I had no idea. I visited with my neighbor and he had indicated that he had cut some of the brush and that and Russell whoever his last name is, I don't recall. I don't, I don't remember. But anyway, the previous owner had done some, um, I don't know. Okay. 
taken care of some so of the trees. Which my question is, uh, it says provide documents and communications from parties who authorized that you've got a document that, that explains what was removed, but we don't see any documentation that that authorized, actually authorized you to do this because you know that it was done. Uh, you're not supposed to do it. Now you know it's not supposed to be done prior to the to the issue of the permit, which involves after uh, we're through us here. So I'm just kind of curious where where the authorization came to do this work. I can't tell you exactly. I contacted Save a Tree and Hill Hiker and I was going through the process of, you know, getting rid of some of the trees in the in the yard and then Hill Hiker was there looking at the tram line and Scott at Hanky at Save a Tree had contacted Patrick something, I don't know. I just was going with the professionals and they said it was all okay and so that's what happened and I wasn't trying to go behind anybody's back doing anything. We were trying to, you know, take whatever we needed to do steps to, you know, do this um, in the correct sequence. And so I assumed that everything was approved by, cause I had called, I, you know, I can't even remember the people I'd called planning commission. I mean, there's North, Village, there's a village of Hudson and there's a North Village of Hudson and I, city of Hudson. And I was making all these contacts to make sure that, you know, we were taking the right steps. So. so the one thing I got from reading. reading. Hi, Go ahead, you know now that you live in the village of North Hudson and not the city of Hudson? Yes, I do know that. One thing I read from the documentation we did get was that uh, majority of the vegetation removed was buckthorn, and I believe, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, but that's okay to cut that. They want you to cut that, don't they? Buckthorn? You can cut that, but typically when you cut it, you're supposed to replace it with some native vegetation because you okay. don't want a bare hillside subject to erosion. Okay. So now, if this goes through, they have a vegetation plan and they will plant some stuff that will hopefully keep the buckthorn from coming back. Yeah, you know, but it's, you know, it, it's a big deal on the riverway when people go and cut first and ask permission later. I mean, you know, I, I live down in town in Troy and you'd be surprised how many trees all of a sudden die in front of people's picture windows or pine trees that only have branches at the very top in front of people's windows. And they all come in and said, well, you know, we didn't know. And then after it's done, what do you do after you've lost trees that are 30 years old? Oh. You know, and, and any person that does, and maybe I'm off topic here and I'm on my pedestal, but any landscaper that does any work in the riverway knows that you need a permit before you cut. No, and now, I can't say we used to have a lot of pine trees and they do die from the bottom up, but I know, know what your point was. <laughs> And Scott uh, Hen Henke from Save a Tree is certainly one who should be aware, know about this. And it's, it's, it's pretty curious to me why he went ahead and did it without a permit. Okay, and the last one of the requested items of the width of the path that was cleared because we had, we had your picture, Tom, from last time that looked very wide. Did we get documentation out to say just how wide that was? Well, that was the last question. Than six feet, but... but you need a, you need like a, uh, Bill, you need like a six foot path or something with to put the thing in there and have the safety on each end. Yeah, the wide part that you just had talked about, that's a different animal than where the lift will go. And we're gonna still reforest along the lift area, but that's a much narrower run. And that's that one that's gonna kind of go, um, you know, uh, side swiping that hill. So from the river, it's gonna be more protected as far as the views. So, okay. um, so yeah, for the elevator itself, we have to have a little bit of work to work on both sides. 
And literally by June, that thing will look like a jungle when we're done with it. I mean, it'll come right back. Okay. Well, before we went to public hearing, I wanted to go through the the items that we had requested as a commission. Uh, did any of the commission members have any other questions left over from uh, the December meeting? No, just about a vegetation or landscape plan, vegetation plan. Okay. Well, let's talk about the landscape plan. This We, we have something here. Yeah, it's about trees, if I'm not mistaken, but no ground covers, uh, nothing. What's going to shield the power box and that five foot by five foot concrete slab it's going on at the top. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Um, after the concrete slab has been poured, the elevator's installed, we're gonna be putting a doghouse, well, actually the carpenter will be putting a doghouse over the top of the motor. And it's gonna be, again, it's gonna be a doghouse as a visual about the size of a 60 pound golden retriever. That's, that's the motor in the gearbox. And it's probably going to be something that'll look very tastefully done. Um, they have a beautiful home there. It'll be tastefully done. There is electronics out there that the elevator guy has to get to. Um, but it will be, you know, as far as a lot of times what they'll do is they'll do some Arbor Vitae back there. Again, so it's a little bit protected and it looks nice. Um, I'm sure when we're completely done with it, um, that little motor housing is going to be something you can get at from a mechanical standpoint to service the elevator, but also protect it and um, and to be able to make it look nice. So it'll be it'll look like a doghouse. Okay. Anything else uh, for now? Um, we could see if there's anyone from the public that would like to uh, comment. I'd ask for a motion to go into public hearing. So moved. Okay, is there a second? I second. Okay, all in favor of going into public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we are in public hearing at 732. Is there anyone from the public who would like to comment now at this time? Thing with Zoom, you never know who's watching. <laughs> Anybody uh, have any other comments? Oh, I signed on late. This is Jared Bachman. Am I audio working? Yes. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Um, I just wanted to say on the last part, because I'm sorry. Forgive me for signing in late. Um, but yeah, you know, planting stuff. He mentioned Arborvitae. Let's keep it to um, plants, our native plants. So we, I wouldn't probably recommend putting arborvitae or weird bushes that don't belong in our ecosystem um, around your motor house, dog house. Um, I just wanted to put that in. If we can make sure to keep with native species. Yeah. Those Is there anyone, anyone from the public at all? Hearing none. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to come out of public hearing. So move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. okay. All in aye. favor of coming out of public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 We're aye. out of public aye. hearing at 734. Thank you. Um, okay. Jared or anyone else from the commission who has any other questions right now? Is this the best time to restate that? <laughs> restate. Uh, what no, I said you uh, about, about the arborvitae and natural or native plants thing. Yes. Yeah, you should be fine. Okay. Okay, um, Kevin, I looked um, at your note, your Kev, your notes, and it said you had no other comments from last time, and I believe the building inspector had no other comments, and the DNR had no other comments. So mainly it was just answering our questions. Anybody still, got any other yeah, comments I'm still on this issue? I'm still yes. concerned that the documents weren't provided that authorized why that why the brush and trees were cut out. 
That, that was one of her requirements was to come up with that documentation. We haven't seen that. Well, some of her answer was some was cut before she, she didn't cut at all. Now, she um, just told us. And in her letter still, said that. Still, Scott went in there and cut trees down without authorization. Where is the documentation to let her do that or let him do that? Yes. Are there said repercussions for stuff like this that is stated in our bylaws or anywhere? I guess that's what it's all coming down to. Because uh, anybody can just go ahead and do what they want. That's the idea. That's why I idea why we're here is to prevent that sort of thing from happening. Well, Paul's brought it up. Our attorney's brought it up twice now that we want to definitely get the message out that you have to before you cut, especially near the river like that, you, you, you have to get it blessed. Our, our, our point right now is other than to bring that up is what do we do now? Uh, one way would be to mitigate it. Well, I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote. No, I'm going to vote. No, on, when the time comes. Okay. When the I, believe, comes. I agree with Tom. I think there should be something done. Um, because the next person that comes in that wants to put a lift down and cuts all their trees first, okay, what happens? I know that's happened in other areas um, in northern Minnesota where somebody comes in and just cuts everything down and they pay the fine and it's all fine and they get what they wanted. But how does this village do something about that? Paul, you have a comment well, I, on that? In some cases, it's handled through fines and through requiring mitigation. Yeah. Well, a, a revegetation plan. And I think as, as part of this, you know, as the one gentleman stated, you know, it, it's nice to just say you're going to put some plannings around the doghouse. Well, you know, usually the plans I see in these situations are detailed. They're done by a landscaper and they'll show exactly what planting, what species, where it's going to go how big it is. And then there's a guarantee that's provided that says, you know, if these things die, they're going to be replaced. Um, you know, I don't know if you want to go down the road of, you know, of finding anyone for cutting this, you know, it, there was some talk that, you know, a village person gave consent, whether that was appropriate or not, I don't know. Um, but, you know, typically, at least, you know, you need a, a detailed vegetative plan that shows what's going to be done. And again, it should be native plantings. It shouldn't be any exotics. And I think that's what we asked for was a, and was we a vegetation do, we plan. Don't it's have pretty that, minimal we? what we got. No, we don't. We have so a we need that planting. We uh, need and you can, you can certainly make that a condition of your approval. Yeah, to provide that and have them do it before the board uh, acts on this. Do we have a okay. village arborist? Yes. Okay. I believe would that we be do. something that the arborist I don't think he was the one that quit. I think. Um, I think we still do. And the arborist, the arborist could look at the plan. What? The arborist could look at the plan and then recommend to the village board if if, if they're happy with it. Um, no, we have to have a plan first. No, no, I'm, like I'm saying if, if that was a, like Paul said, we... that was a condition of a of a permit, because we, again, we don't all we do is recommend to the board. We're not the final authority anyway. But is the board going to look at a planting? If our arborist looks at it first and then and then and then rec and then advises the board, that's what I was getting into. I we, don't know so. if the arborist has that authority. No, the, the arborist can advise the board. It's always the board's final decision, correct? My point is, I don't know if the arborist has the authority to approve a landscape plan. That's planning believe, commission and village board, so I don't know why the arborist would be involved. <laughs> we would gain a lot of information from the University of River Falls Arbor Program and to let us know which species are native to our area. There was a list here that was sent in Ironwoods on 
on it and that one strikes out. Ironwood is okay in some areas, but it's not indigenous to our area. So on the St. Croix River Valley, I have heard that the DNR has asked for like ironwood to be cut down. That's not something that should be replaced into the system. Um, maybe there's a little bit more education, but I know that we can work with the school system down at the UW there. Oh, what? Well, I guess I'm leaning towards if our biggest thing is is the uh, removal and replacement of vegetation is like we do on several conditional use permits. You put it a you make that a condition of approval, and uh, you word it such that it's a professional landscape plan or however however it wants to be worded, and then let the board make the final decision. But will the board take a look at it? That's my question. Or is that something that just comes up and they say, oh, here's the vegetation plan. I think it's good. Well, I think if, if the plan commission gives that direction to the board and points it out, that they'll do that. Uh, they a lot of times after these meetings, I go to the board and I, I present what we talk about. I haven't in the Zoom world, so I'm, poor Paul has to do it for me, but uh, that's what the kind of thing I would be pointing out is that we talked about this a lot, and this is what we came up with. And so they know what to look for. Yeah, and I found that the, the board is very respectful of the planning commission's opinions on these things. I, I, I did some calculating. I think I'm in my 21st year of this, and I think they overruled us twice. <laughs> so they, they're, they're very respectful of what we come up with. Uh, any any other comments? Does anyone want to make a motion? Should I make a motion? Anyone? I usually dump I on it, Rob on this case. <laughs> I think as as part of your motion, you need to address the color of of the tram, and if you're going to make any comments on the size of the landing, and then also the vegetative plan. What was the first one about the power? That was Brent, jo Brent Johnson was going to burn that up. It's, I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, I got this on full volume. Know. I still can't understand. What I was the first hear, point? I couldn't hear you. Okay, in regards to the power, I, I'm not familiar with the electrical code enough to say that it needs to be on its own standpipe for emergency disconnect or emergency shutoff. Maybe Tom can answer that. If, if the power can be in the doghouse, then it's a mute point. If, it, if the power stub, you know, disconnect needs to be visible and uh, accessible immediately, I would suggest that most of them are a metal clad housing. We just painted an earth tone to yeah. blend in with the area. It could be a green, it could be a tan, you know, something that kind of makes it virtually disappear. So yeah, we do have to have a disconnect within 18 inches of the elevator, according to the national code. And um, I would have to double check on painting that um, from the NEC code, National Electric Code, whether or not that's, you can do that or not. I, I'm not sure if you can. Um, I think the, there's, there's I think the river, there. Pardon me? The Riverside, the Riverside, I believe can be painted, you know, the, physical side where the disconnect is readily visible that may not be able to be painted so I would presume the disconnect would face the dwelling not the river and, and yeah I mean you can check the NEC but my there, understanding there. was it had to be just readily, readily attainable that you can see the actual disconnect and shut it off correct you have to have OSHA requires lockout tag out for elevator mm -hmm. inspection and safety. Correct. Oh, you know what? There is one more question I have. Was yes. there, and this is related to stairs, were there any stair access to the river prior to this on the property? 
Heidi well, saying no. No, there was no stairs. There was nothing. So they, you, I thought I saw a dock in the picture. Uh, not sure. Uh, no, the dock is ne our neighbors both on either side have a tram and a dock. Those are the neighbor's docks. <clears throat> kind of looks like a floating pontoon. Or no, that's a dock. Oh, they're floating docks. I mean, I have um, Bill Nelson, I believe, um, I know. Designed. How close is your neighbor? What's that? How close is your neighbor? To the south, I'm thinking. What do you mean? How close is my neighbor? Uh, you mean well, where would I dock? Our dock. I'm just looking at a an aerial photo, unless it's uh, that the DNR had on on their on I, their items uh, attached to you know their review. Yeah, no, I don't know. I I can't tell you how close. I mean. We've got quite, our property lines go right up. There's a fence that goes right next door to the one neighbor on, I don't know, I'm not good in direction, but on one side of us and then the other side, um, we go right, the property line actually goes up to their fire pit. <laughs> so. Okay. I mean, Mary, it looks wood. like it's big flaws. Okay. Any any other comments, questions? Well, I will try to suggest a motion. Uh, forgive me, because as you all know, I don't do this. <laughs> I always dump it on someone else. <laughs> so if we're all done, I will I will come up with a motion here. I move to recommend approval to construct a lift elevator at 222 Summers Landing Road North with the following conditions. The lift is required to provide pedestrian access to the river because of steep, rocky, unstable, or wet site conditions. Number two, the car floor of the lift shall not exceed four feet by six feet in area. Number three, canopies and roofs are not allowed. Number four, all visible parts of the lift shall be painted or finished in earth tone, non-reflective materials, and shall be visibly inconspicuous. Number four, lifts in their transporting device or power source shall be visually inconspicuous and shall be located in the most visually inconspicuous portion of the lot. Number five, native planting should be used to form a vegetative canopy to screen the lift from the river. A vegetation plan shall be provided. Must Number be six, provided. Excuse me? No, shall. Must be provided. Shall means must, doesn't it, Mary? It means, yes, you have to. You don't have yeah. a choice. Shall okay. is, shall's the strong word. Um, number six, existing vegetation may be removed only within one foot of either side of the lift route and no more than eight feet above the lift floor. Also, erosion control measures shall be in place during construction. Number seven, only one lift is permitted on a lot that abuts the lower St. Croix River. And number eight, and the no plan stairs. shall... Excuse me? No stairs, only one lift is permitted. And if you have a lift, you may not have stairs. That's correct. Okay, I'll, I'll add that to number seven. Only one lift is permitted on a lot that abuts the lower St. Croix River and semicolon, then if, stairs if, are not allowed. If stairs exist, they must be removed. Right. And number eight, the plan shall contain a certifi certification by registered PE or architect that the stairway or lift components are securely anchored to prevent them from shifting and from causing erosion. Is there a second on this motion? Do we have to bring up, did we get documentation of where they got the okay from the DNR? We have a letter from the DNR. And that was fine. Let, but if, if someone seconds that we can have discussions Right. Okay. So then any. So Jared, second it. Can I get a second? Second it. Yeah. I had seconded already. Oh, you already did, Rod. Sorry. Okay. We have this letter from the DNR and uh, 
please read the, and from this December 8th, she had, she had some questions and I think we addressed them, but in her first paragraph from the DNR, they said, please read this letter into the record of the Mahler CUP. The department supports the granting of the conditional use permit for the construction of a lift, providing that the requirements can be met. So that's the DNR's opinion, as long as you meet their conditions and, and you had that letter from December 8th. And I think we talked about them and, and right. put them into the motion. Okay, now it's discussion time. Anything else? Mr. Chairman, do you want to specify in that motion that the polycarbonate is not allowed? Um, what I had on number four is, is, is all visible it, parts of the lift shall be painted or finished in earth tone, non-reflective materials and shall be visually inconspicuous. And so I would add, I would if add paint poly polycarb, if it would paint a polycarbonate, would that be a problem? No. Yes, it would be a problem. No, no polycarbonate is not allowed. It is not allowed. Is there a, is that a safety thing or, or what? Oh, Bill said that he could make it in a different material and that's what, what the intent are. I believe we expected it to be. I didn't, I didn't know it was a material problem. I thought it was a visual problem. It is a visual problem. You don't want, polycarbonate is not allowed. It's a, polycarbonate is a reflective material. Even if it's painted a, a matte color? You're gonna get paint to stay on there without flaking? Well, I have no idea. I don't know how they form it or anything. I thought, it would, it, but um, okay, I would, I would, uh, I would definitely, let's see. Can I do this with, Paul, can I do this with my motion going and a second that I can revise one of the points? Yeah, you're gonna to wanna to do an amendment to that motion and okay. a second, but I think, you know, there was that. I think Mary also had some concern about the size of the deck. And I don't know of if the landing that or not. Yeah, the yeah. landing. Which, which, okay, <laughs> amendment number one, uh, modify condition four to read, all visible parts of the lift shall be painted or finished in earth tone, non-reflective materials and shall be visually inconspicuous. Polycarbonate materials are not allowed. Correct. Is there a second on that? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Actually, Mary, do you have a comment on what you might want to add? Actually, it should be the person who seconded your motion that seconds the amended. Second, I second the amendment. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure how to word the landing thing. Well, I, I go. I look back to the DNR what they say about it, and it's. Uh, shall not be larger than required to accommodate. So there is some flexibility. There I is, but there the was also- happy, You can make anyone happy. So how would, how would you say that, Mary? Well, I think you have to do two. One, you can just approve the plan as submitted. Two, you can ask the plan be modified uh, you know, you were talking about relocation of the stairways. And I think, you know, the applicant is going to want some direction. Um, well, I don't but, think you need to have, you know, you've got four people in a tram. It's a 32 inch wide door. Only one person's getting out at a time. How much room do you need to move to the beach? Yeah, and, and that's fine. And, and I think you just give the applicant some direction as to how big the, the bottom landing will be. Well, I think we, I think we've heard, an, everyone should have heard enough of what we want, right? So don't, it's only don't come with a plan feet. to the board of something really big. <laughs> Mary, did you have a, a nominal size you had in mind? Yeah, that's why I was trying to figure out to, you know. I mean, we don't want to engineer this. That's not our job. No, but, you know, the swinging door to the deck from the sliding door or the tram is going to be what? 32 inches, 36 inches wide. We don't have a dimension on that, do we? And so you've got that and you've got to have, I would imagine at least two to three. I, I wouldn't make it any bigger than, than six feet. Kevin, do you have a comment on this? Six feet square footage by what do you mean by that, Mary? 
Um, I, well, they have like six feet by just over six feet by six feet still, you know, that's, that's plenty to get off a tram. May I interject one thing <clears throat> in regards to the swing door on the landing, uh, Wisconsin code, if a door swings into a landing zone, the outside of the scope of that landing will require a minimum of, I want to say three feet by three feet with no intrusion. So just so you're on the same page that you have to allow for the swing of that door plus a minimum area for a person to safely stand outside the swing of the door. So take that into consideration. So you're saying one person could exit the tram. The second person should wait technically for them to go down the stairs. So just take that into consideration on the minimal size, please. So again, I'll go look at a civil engineer. Do you have a comment on that, Kevin? I mean, if it's like three foot for the swinging door plus another three feet for clear zone, I think it's going to be pretty close to what's actually shown. So we need Correct, 30, we need 30 or 35 square feet. Is that what you're saying? Right, right. I think by the time you take those in consideration, you're going to be pretty close to what's actually shown. On the draw. Right, because I have to take into consideration the intrusion of the handrail system, the safety guardrails on that landing. So when you look at my quote unquote dimensions as submitted, I'm taking into consideration the overall width of the top rail of the railing to make sure that's that I still have my net uh, safe area for occupants. So Mary, does that give you any uh, feeling for what you might want to say? Lower landing, lower landing should be. No more than. No more than necessary. I don't like that. Hey, if no one else has a problem with the landing, um, you know, I'll let it go, but. Um, I think that it needs to be a safe landing. Yes. Because yes, if I it agree. comes back that we changed the plan as a plan commission for the safe landing and somebody gets hurt. Can, who's involved? Right, I get it. Sorry, Jean. Who's responsible then? Right. right. I agree with you, Gene. I, I, I think I still go back to that last sentence in the DNR letter that'll cover everything. The landing should not be larger than required to accommodate the lift. And that's, that's the catch all, isn't it, Kevin? Right. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely. Okay. Would that phrase work for an amendment, Mary? Huh? Do it you want to put that in as an amendment? I will do Please. that. Yeah, you're going to want to approve their plan if you're okay yeah. with their plan. You don't want to leave it open ended at this point. No, nope. you're okay with what they've submitted, then you know okay. that's what you're going to recommend approval for. All right. So, well, how about that landing plan submitted to plan commission? Um, as approved. Dimensions I, of landing area. <laughs> I, I don't I can't follow that. No, I know. I, I, know. I don't get that either. Can we just approve what they said? I, I if, if I could interject, I mean honestly, if you were using it in the winter and you had three people with skis, or if there was a couple handicapped children down there and people were on crutches, how many could you could bring down three people and people are on crutches? If there is a wheelchair, there's enough room. I think that it's small enough that I don't think I've seen larger ones up or down south landings. Um, but if it is to stay under what, 822 square feet on the landing or give or take, well, 18 square feet, I don't know what that other part, it's 12 and what another 
five square feet in the stairs. Um, if it's tastefully done and then we get back to the proper planting, planting of uh, native species around it, um, I think that could be acceptable. All right. Okay. Final so landing you... dimensions to com final landing dimensions to conform to plan submitted. Yes. Okay. There you Does go. That work? Okay. So the lower yep. landing and Mary, or Mary, both just landings. So I can interject. Uh, sure. Excuse me. Just to interject on that, we obviously want to make this as minimalistic as possible. Ideally, we would only have, uh, with what Bill's saying, how low the profile is with the tram system. We hopefully can have a minimal stairway. You know, it's drawn because I don't know the final elevation with, uh, you know, seven risers. Maybe we only end up with three. We want to keep this as low to the ground as possible that is still buildable. We don't want a big albatross on the beach. Right. So, you know, approve as designed per se right now with the hopes that we can actually make it more minimal. Ah, good point. Um, well, okay. Let's so, so, so landing area not to exceed plans, plan, but not to exceed well. square footage of plans submitted. Okay, you're talking about both landing areas, upper and lower? Yep. With, with the caveat that, Up again, it's based on, based on final elevation. You know, we'll do our due diligence to keep this as low to the ground as possible. But I don't want to, if I come back and say, hey, we need eight risers, do I have to go in front of you again for adding an additional seven inches in height to the landing? you know, seven and three quarter inches to add for another riser on a stair. I think this is why we want these kind of plans before you come to us to approve them. You know, the whole, right. you know, if you were building a house, we'd want all the plans. <laughs> we want right. But I, what I'm saying is that I will keep it as minimalistic as possible. What is your grade, uh, my goal, my what is goal your grade would from be, base to beach? Yeah. My goal is to keep this thing as close to the ground as possible within our setback requirements so the homeowner has as few stairs as possible in the event that we did have someone on crutches or mm -hmm. you know God the whole point of a lift is not stairs yeah but this has to be in a safe direction enough from high water and everything else you don't want to build them too low nor does anything else as long as this is Correct. up on the bluff line you naturally have stairs and stairs they could get hit in an ice in a heavy year may take 50 years mm -hmm. or whatever for the water to get that high, but. Right. I just wanted I, to, you know, but we'll do whatever we can for the village to make sure that it's appropriate. Okay, Mary, I have an amendment. Landing platforms not to exceed areas as shown on submittal. Will you second um, that? Final yes, with final elevations to be kept at a minimum. Does that work? Yes. Did you get those words, Jessica? What she just said? Okay. Okay. You second that. Okay. Any other comments? No, can you read all that part that Barry put in that's now in the amendment? J Jessica, can you read the last one to us? I didn't, or Mary, you can read it. I thought it was more that the. Uh, no, I want the the words that is are in it, not what you thought. Landing platforms not to exceed areas as shown on submittal with final. And I, I missed the rest of that. About the elevations, Mary. Final elevation to be kept to a minimum. Okay. All right. I just there's been so much conversation in it. I, I know. didn't know what the amendment was. I didn't yep. know what it was either. Okay. Okay. If there's no other comments. Uh, Rod would have to second that amendment. I thought you seconded it. No, Rod amended your, or Rod seconded your motion, so. Oh, yes. Okay. 
Is there a second then? Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, there's a second on that also. <laughs> okay. Paul, do we, vote, do we vote on it all as one big package then with the amendments? You can do that. Okay. And uh, Jessica, I'll ask for a roll call vote because I've heard different things and it's too hard to follow here. So the motion's been made with two amendments. Uh, all in favor, Jessica will ask us. I don't hear you. Your mm -hmm. microphone. There Oops. <laughs> Anderson. Approve. Bachman. Approve. Absent. Miser. Yes. Mitchell. Nay. Schneider. Yes. Wecken. Yes. Thank you all very much. We I have like gotten through item one. <laughs> I like to make on our, uh, thing. Thanks for everybody's uh, input. The next item of business. Um, yes. Mike. Yes. We need to make a recommendation to the village board or for some kind of penalty. Some kind of penalty for starting this process without the pro proper authorization. Yes. I would like something sent to save a tree and that noted that they should have had permission. And I don't think it's Ms. Mahler's problem because she didn't know. I mean, she just got somebody to come in and they should have known that you can't cut trees if they're a tree business and they that are know serving that. North Hudson. And I they think they better. should be sanctioned. And I guess Ms. Mahler should be sanctioned too for not following figuring it out before she did it and I don't know how you sanction or do that but you're lucky we have an attorney with us he can give us some guidance well I will bring that up with the board and they'll, they can decide whether they want to do that that would yeah, be the best way to do it I'm saying it should be a recommendation to the board that there should be some kind of sanction or penalty or something with this all right, make a motion. We'll get a second. We'll vote well, on it. Well, doesn't the DNR have something to say about that if these trees were cut incorrectly? Well, the, well, the DNR is going to look to the village since yes. it's in the village. They're going to look to our well, What about the Wild River Society or whatever they are? No, we don't want them. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. They we'll never the be able to do anything in North Hudson. Hudson. I, 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 you're right. It's a big deal. Um, you know, the county's fine people, townships is fine people. Um, you know, people need to know. And, you know, people buys, they buy a house and they enjoy the benefits of the river and that comes with some responsibility and they need to know what those rules are. I, I agree totally. Well, Mary, this is still part of this topic. So if you'd like to make a motion on a recommendation, go ahead and we'll uh, vote on it. Um, how do, you, how do you want to do this? We can I ask, recommend can writing see? a letter of sanction to the homeowner and the. Well, Paul was going to let the board know that that what our, think our, need to our things are, but if you want a recommendation, board. go ahead and come up with one. I think we do too, but it's just it's so hard to find that. Ninety-eight dash one fifty-one is huge. Hmm. Um, and even in, you know, the zoning chapter, I was looking for an actual, there is a penalty part in 151 or violations and remedies and penalties, but, um, I would, I would rather not get involved with that. I'd rather let Paul talk to the board about it because he'll have more of a background. Well, I think there needs to be some kind of a, just a, a, a letter of recommend, if you want to call it that. I think you can find people for doing that, actually, on the river. Well, if you want to entertain a motion to, you know, recommend to the board that they consider, you know, monetary fines and, you know, correspondence with the, the landscaper, 
uh, informing him of the violation, I think that's fine. And then the board can make a decision. Does Patrick Moose or whatever ring a bell to anybody? Do you know who he's that is? Public works director. No. Nope. Yeah, he's the public works director for the village. Does he have anything to do with um, no. cutting? Okay. Absolutely not. Nope, he wouldn't have no. anything to do with that. I don't know who's, I don't know who's got talked to them. Okay. Scott. Well, it's a moot point now because it's done and the trees are gone. So we need to move forward to prevent it from happening again. And to mitigate it and to replace them. So like, and, which is part of the vegetation plan. Yeah. So Mary, will, do, are you working on something or should oh, we go I'm on? I'm trying to find it. So, um, well, you don't need a site. Just use the generic uh, recommendation. I would terms. like what our attorney said. If we could just reuse that, I would make a motion following what he advised us to do. I'll well, I don't have it written down, so you have to restate it. <laughs> well, he can he can say it again. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. <laughs> it's getting late for me to remember that far back. Well, yes, <laughs> me too, and I'm older than you. <laughs> I, I think a, a motion recommending to the board that they explore a monetary fine and writing a letter informing the landscaper, you know, of the rules and potential penalties for cutting in the riverway. And, and just as an aside, um, just to educate the residents along the river, you know, the village could just send out a reminder letter. Saying, at the expense oh, of the landowner, property owner. Yeah, or and, and or and or the landscaper. Yep. Find on both sides. On Thank the you. provider of the work and the homeowner. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I can't see you, Mary, but I know you're writing right now. Might be wise for the village to send out to all the tree cutters in this area that that is a situation that needs to have approval before you take a job to cut down trees. Um, I uh, cut trees and I know better. I've been doing it for a year and a half with a guy that's been doing it for over 10 years and um, it's, you can't touch anything on the river bluffs. You're not supposed to. No, but, I know that. You can't even do it on lake shores, so. <laughs> but I mean, a branch in a window is one thing, but cutting down a strip out of the woods for a lift, you don't usually touch that. Not without proper certification. You wanna know everything and you wanna get signed off before you even touch it. Okay, do we have a motion, Sarda? Um, recommend to the village board to explore forfeiture against, or forfeiture for violation of 98-151. To whom? To explore um, a forfeiture for violation of 98-151 to the homeowner or the landowner and um, the landscaper or whatever. Okay, they can explore it and find out who it should be. Explore it and we recommend um, sending a letter informing residents on the National Scenic Riverway of the need to get approval before cutting trees or clear cutting or anything like that. Um, okay. With the expense to be borne by the property owner 
but the mailing expense to be, you know, borne by the property owner and the landscaper. Okay, is there a second to that? I second. Any other discussion? All, all in favor of Mary's uh, motion to uh, have the village board uh, look into those items, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, the recommendation passes. Thank you. Anything else on item four? If not, <laughs> thank you all for participating. Number five, review of the conditional use permit of Joshua Rosenwinkel for an independent indoor auto dealership at 235 Monroe Street North. Uh, Jessica, what do we have on that? I spoke with um, Joshua this afternoon and he does not have any involvement with his um, auto dealership there. Okay, and He's does he have yet. a valid conditional use permit? What? Does he have a valid conditional use permit or did that expire? Well, it expired January 31st, but so he's not running do, it. So we need to do nothing then. I would. Well, I'm not so sure Jessica, about that. Uh, Jessica, he, he's not running it. Is somebody else? He, he had, has nothing to do with it. I don't know if it's being run. Not to my knowledge. It's not. There are no cars in there. They're all outside. How many cars can be outside that place? Is there a limit on that? And who owns them? And are they running a business under the guise of the previous if guy? The permit went to Joshua Rosenwinkel. If anyone else does it, they need to come in and get a conditional use permit. They can't run it under his name. Correct? I wouldn't think so. No, they cannot. Okay. Are there other, what were the permits held before this? Do we know? What? It's the only one. It's a conditional use permit. We asked to have it reviewed after a year. Um, actually, the year was up in October, I thought. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I know it had been at least two months prior to that. Yeah, so it, it was up in October and we gave them an extension basically, but so now it's expired. There is no conditional use permit. Okay. Well, so it's expired, I would think we don't have any to do business anything. out of there. Um, it's expired actually because it's been six months since he actually operated the business. And we because have in our code book about that, that um, if it's no longer in business, it expires after six months. When, and when, and correct, when the condition use permit was issued, there was a one year sunset on it. Yep. And so that's, and that that's coming meeting, gone. In that one meeting, I was on the side of extending it due to situations of COVID um, for helping small businesses and whatever else. I gave it a benefit of a doubt. And I, yep. that's why I asked that it was given a little bit longer. Um, so I guess yep. what we come from there, so it's defunct, um, but any business that is running out there, and I did just happen to notice, I drove by the other day, there is a lot of cars outside. Um, is that another business going on and who's running that? And are they permitted to, I mean, it's a lot of cars. It seemed to me that way. Yeah, I don't think they're permitted for anything there. Um, we, there that's gonna be a problem property. Um, I think it already is. Uh, how do we nib that in the bud? Well, Jessica, somebody from the village, when, when something is reported that is askew, somebody goes and checks on it. Who is that person? All of us in the office. I think there is being research done internally um, in that property right now, but I don't okay. have details of that. In your opinion, there's nothing for the plan commission to do today. Is that correct? Correct. Because I okay. think it's just dealing with Joshua Rosenwinkel's CUP. Okay. And he's okay. not running it. Okay. Right. But then, you know, since the conditional use permit lapsed or whatever expired, um, 
just because it goes out of business is the leftover parts of that business ours? <laughs> you know, or you just get to leave cars out there. Well, what's the gentleman's owner of the property? Because I don't have the papers. I Leland Golicki. That's right. And well, actually, we could we could notify Leland that um, this conditional use permit has expired or lapsed. Yep. Whatever. Right. Yep. And um, it, and they need to clear up the property. Can we do that? And or state their intentions with having that many vehicles there. I mean, it's one thing to have five vehicles. I guess I could understand that in the industrial lot there. And I mean, it is what it is, but it seems that there's quite a bit more than five. There is. Okay. Well, if the permit has expired, wouldn't that person have to come in and get a new permit? If they wanted to run a business there, yes. If they're running but a Jessica business there, Jessica says it's being looked at in the have, office to they'd have determine to what's going their on there. Cars. Well, and how many are they permitted there? Um, well, is that a nuisance then? Is that under a nuisance ordinance? I have no idea. I don't know how many cars are there or what it is because it was. Well, maybe maybe we system. just let the uh, village staff yep. work on their investigation. Yes, I, I would yeah. think that would be great. As I, as I asked Jessica, it's not our concern tonight. Once, okay, good. When she finds out something, it might be. But right now, it's not. All right. So it only takes a call from a concerned citizen to bring it up, and then it will be investigated, is what They're I They're already looking at it. <laughs> I understood that. <laughs> well, you know, it's. are you sure the cars you're seeing there aren't just uh, people parking their cars there, workers in associated buildings? Because when I was there... This was a couple of months ago now when it first came up and there was only one car inside the building and there were no cars outside. Well, at all. since it snowed, I was there um, with our last meeting and it snowed several days before. There so they were no buried cars, in there? No cars inside and yeah, at least half a dozen cars with snow on them. There yeah. was, okay. It didn't so look like are. imports to me either, so... No, they were junkers. I mean, they weren't good looking. <laughs> okay. I didn't see those. I haven't been down there since Okay, then, then so. I think we should just let the village handle yep, I agree. this for now, and then we can reconvene in a month and figure it out. I okay. agree. Because I'm not uh, Item go six, routine business. Cars. Does anyone have routine business? Item seven, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Gene says a motion. Is there a second? I second. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. We are adjourned at 823. Thank you all very much. Thank Everybody you. Everybody enjoy the warmth that's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Be well.